In this quick video, I'm going to show you how to select the proper contours for a 2D adaptive pass. It's pretty easy to get confused between selecting models and selecting contour edges or making sure that your stock contours are properly selected. In this operation, I am going to be facing off the material to this top ledge, and then we're gonna clear out this small shelf and leave this edge so that we can come back and clean it up. So I have a facing operation that will take down the material. I have a 2D adaptive with a three quarter inch carbide end mill that will do the roughing. And then I'll come back with a quarter inch uh, three flute to smooth everything out and do a finishing pass. Just so we're all on the same page, the way this particular part is set up there's my stock dimensions here based on actual stock. And then I've selected the stock box, stock box point, the top and the center. Okay, and then I reoriented my part to make sure that the Z was up. You can see I have a little bit of stock on the top bottom and all edges. My facing operation will come through and take off a full sweep. It's only a two and a half inch wide piece of stock, and I have a three inch cutter. The important selection is looking at where this 2D adaptive is coming in and making sure it makes a clean pass along this edge, but it also comes in from the outside of your stock. That way we optimize the tool path and we also optimize how the tool is entering. So in this case, we can take a full depth of cut around our part here. So we have a really fast operation. So let's look at our setup here. The tool is selected three quarter inch shear hog. On my model, the proper selection is to uncheck these two boxes so that we can select this open contour and then make sure machine cavities is also on. And that way we don't uh, cut through some of those holes and cut around our part. So we wanna make sure that we're getting that open contour. When we select stock contours, if we select nothing, this orange bounding box is gonna be our selection. So just make sure that that is your entire stock. Okay, as you walk through, you can see that from the contour is my bottom. And then I've added some stock to leave here. So I have 20 thousandths against this wall and then 20 thousandths on the floor. And then I'll change a few of these options, but the ramping isn't a big deal because now that we've selected the entire stock as our stock contour, it should come in from the outside and clear the stock. So let's simulate that with stock on. And we can see that cleared everything from all of the edges. So that looks good. You can't see any of the model, which means our stock to leave was set up properly. Okay, let's do the normal simulate and then you can see exactly where it's coming in. I'll turn stock on and off. And here you can see we get a really nice adaptive tool path. Okay, and this is a good reason why we're leaving the stock to, on, stock to leave on because we have a lot of witness marks with this 2D adaptive. So that's no problem. We'll come back and clear that right off. If in this operation, if we try to select particular uh, stock contours, let's say we try to grab all of the edges, you'll, you'll notice that it's pretty tricky to set up. So if my normal selection was this face here and I select all these holes so that I am not, I'm going to go over them. Let's see what the operation produces. It cuts now 
in the middle of our part and it's going to leave all those edges on the stock. It's not going to go towards the stock. So when I simulate that, I'm just going to do that quickly. It leaves all of this edge plus the 20 thousandths that we uh, kept on from stock to leaf. So that wouldn't give us our finished part and we'd have a ton of stock around that we still need to clean up and that could really mess up when we do our next operations. So this is where it gets tricky trying to select the right stock contours and predicting. So if you know you want to clear from an edge out all of the stock, the best way to do that is to just select that edge and then make sure it's in the right direction. Here we can reverse it so it's coming from this edge in and it's covering all those stock contours. If I selected my stock contours here, 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 and there, I get the same tool path here as I did without selecting those contours. So it does a pretty good job of recognizing what you want and see the tool path should be very similar. Okay, so hopefully that clears up some of the selections between model and stock contours. And if you look here, I created another 2D path same way I just derived it. And then if I really wanted to get a nice finish on that one edge, I could go down and hit create derived operation 2D milling. And this is where I would do that 2D contour. And then I would just have it ride along that edge. Most of my settings should be pretty good. And again, from that contour. And let's see what the defaults produce. Yeah, there we go. So we should get a pretty nice clean edge that would clean up all those witness marks there. And again, we can quickly simulate oops, the whole job just to see the whole process. There's our cleanup pass. And then we'll run that quarter inch along that edge just to clean up all those witness marks. And there you go. You have a nice clean edge against your model. And this should be relatively uh, clean as well. Hopefully that helps distinguish some of the selections between the 2D adaptive and being able to create pretty unique selection types.